I'm going to discuss the mechanisms of apathy in small vessel disease, or SVD. Now, SVD is the single largest contributor of vascular dementia worldwide, and is characterized by white matter hyperintensities on magnetic resonance imaging. Up to 50% of patients with SVD suffer from a disorder of motivation known as clinical apathy, which also occurs in other neurological conditions. Now, the mechanisms of apathy are not well understood but we can conceptualize it as a deficit in motivated voluntary behavior. That's a deficit in linking motivation to the initiation of action. And one way to probe motivation here is to examine performance on effort-based decision-making tasks like the one seen above. In a typical task, participants may be asked if they're willing to exert some effort in return for reward. And these tasks are useful because they allow us to ask mechanistic questions about apathy, such as, are patients apathetic because they're insensitive to reward? or are they hypersensitive to effort? We also know from functional neuroimaging studies in healthy people that both reward and effort processing take place in distinct regions of the brain. Typically, these connect the medial frontal regions to the basal ganglia structures and include the ventromedial prefrontal cortex, the ventral striatum, and the dorsal anterior cingulate cortex. So a second question about apathy is if these brain regions or their connections are altered. To investigate this, we conducted a multimodal study which combined behavioral experiments with neural imaging. Our behavioral paradigm involved offering participants a monetary reward in return for physical effort, where the reward was represented by these virtual apples that you can see on the tree, and the physical effort by the height of the yellow bar on the tree trunk, such that the higher the bar, the more you have to squeeze on these handheld devices. And on a trial-by-trial basis, participants were asked, is the reward worth the effort? If they didn't think so, they could gently squeeze no and move on to the next trial. Otherwise, they had to squeeze in proportion to the allocated effort. 82 patients with SVD were enrolled in the study, and here I've split them into a red apathetic subgroup and blue motivated subgroup. These figures demonstrate the proportion of offers accepted on the y-axis and the increasing amount of reward or effort on the x-axis. On this first figure, you can see that when the reward levels are low, Patients with apathy accept significantly less offers. However, as the reward continues to increase, they behave normally. On the second figure, you can also see that as the effort continues to increase, patients with apathy accept significantly less offers. So to summarize, in SPD, patients with apathy are less incentivized by low levels of reward and more averse to high effort. Well, what about the neuroimaging? To investigate this, we conducted a whole brain analysis technique known as tract-based spatial statistics, which examines the integrity of the white matter tracts. And what you can see here is that in patients with apathy, there were deficits in multiple tracts connecting the medial frontal regions to the basal ganglia structures. Two examples are the cingulum bundle above and the anterior limb of the internal capsule below. So you can also see that these tracts are in close association with the same brain regions implicated in effort and reward processing in healthy people. An important question is if we can relate our behavioral data to our neuroimaging findings. To answer this, we fit a drift diffusion model, which integrated the patient's choices and reaction times, giving rise to a series of behavioral parameters. One of those parameters, known as the drift rate, was associated with the severity of apathy, as well as the white matter integrity in those regions implicated in apathy, which are in orange. Notably, this parameter was not related to the white matter integrity in two control networks. This is an important finding, because it bridges together the behavioral signature of apathy in our task with specific neuroimaging findings. To conclude, apathy is associated with altered effort-based decision-making for rewards in SVD, and the key mechanisms underlying apathy are a reduced sensitivity to reward and an increased aversion to effort. The white matter tract changes specifically associated with apathy include those which connect the medial frontal regions to the basal ganglia structures, which we know are implicated in effort-based decisions. And finally, computational modeling parameters can relate apathetic behavior to neural measures, and this may pave the way for a neurocognitive model of apathy.